uh, doing economics at Anish Kotamati is uh, doing economics at uh, Nottingham University and he's kindly agreed to do this session. And uh, he will probably do a session first, like a presentation, and then you can ask question and answer as normal. Um, we'll probably, once uh, we get the recording, we'll post it in the group, or once uh, we uh, will probably upload it into the YouTube channel, and then you can, uh, you can see it at any time in our YouTube channel. I'll send the link in the group. Yeah, thank you, Anish. Yeah, it's all yours now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Uncle. Hi, my name is Anish. I'm just going to share my screen if that's all right to make sure everything, uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen now. Um, I am a second year economic student at the University of Nottingham. And yeah, uh, I'm just going to give you this little talk about the whole application into the course of economics and potentially what you can come across at uni. I think it's really useful to know in general the future steps taken in this short um, space. So just a little bit about me. I am from Newcastle under Lyme. So I went to Newcastle under Lyme school. They are um, an independent school and I completed my GCSEs in 2019. So, um, I, I definitely could have worked harder uh, for my GCSEs, but I came out of it with two nines, five eights, and two sevens, and with uh, a nine in maths, an eight in English language. And um, I stayed at the school for a couple of years. So I carried on at Newcastle on the Lime School, and I did A-levels in further maths, French, economics, and maths. Uh, achieving A star, A star, AA. And straight after that, I got into the University of Nottingham for economics. And I'm doing a BSc economics degree, a Bachelor of Science. And um, yeah, my first two years have been quite eventful in terms of my um, ex job experience opportunities. I had an internship in the spring term uh, semester at the Nottinghamshire County Council and then in the summer I took up this other internship at uh, a firm called Inclusive Boards aimed at improving diversity and inclusion at the governance level for um, a number of uh, private sector public sector uh, organizations and um, this year I've managed to secure myself a Barclays vacation scheme internship, which will be near Manchester. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the whole process, what I went through, at least from a perspective of somebody who's been through it and somebody who's interacted with a number of people to um, achieve somewhat of a similar goal. So yeah, um, I just wanted to start off with some signs that economics might be for you. If you are driven and hardworking, which of course is applicable to absolutely any, any course, but I feel that economics is a degree which um, uh, will lead to jobs that are performance-based salaries and which will reward this resourcefulness. Um, from an early age. So I think that's a really useful skill to have uh, if you love maths, uh, because there will be a lot of maths, just calculating statistics, it's all there. And then problem solving as well. Um, it doesn't have to be maths problem solving. It can be uh, any kind of issues, even if it's like personal issues, this can be really useful in job interviews later on and even for um, personal statement. Uh, you like to use logic and analytical thinking to derive conclusions. This is very economics based. And this is something that you'll find that you have to use a lot in, um, in a number of modules, in exams, just the, the thought processes that uh, economics teaches you is usually, are usually one of logic and uh, analytical thinking. And, um, this one, you like working in a team, but you can be independent, as in you need to be very flexible, um, even be it at university, um, you will be working in groups, you'll be doing coursework together, 
but at the end of the day you need to be that independent person to strive to be the best or like try to be the best at least or do the best you can and I think having that independence will really help when you're applying for jobs as well and I'm just curious about the economy in general um, you've seen it on the news all these figures inflation going up unemployment increasing how has that come about economics is definitely for you if you really want to get a, a real understanding of this subject. So why should you choose economics? Oh, sorry. Can you see uh, this? Okay, by the way, can somebody just let me know uh, at all? Yeah, you're fine. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, um, Economics is an incredibly flexible degree. Uh, once you graduate, you can go into a number of sectors. And uh, for example, financial sector, you can go into the public sector, you can work for the government, you can be a policymaker, you could go into audit and insurance, you can just, you can absolutely go into anything. You can go into academia, as in um, publish a number of research articles, you can become a lecturer even. There's a lot to do with it because economics has a number of different fields, just such as like, again, policy making, behavioral economics. It goes on because after all, it's a social science where we study um, the best ways to kind of solve this problem of the fact that every that people have unlimited needs and scarce resources which again goes back to the whole problem solving uh, trait, which is really, really, really good to have. So yeah, and this promotes critical thinking. And um, in general, you come across even more issues as you delve deeper into economics. Uh, I'd say I've learned quite a bit about um, any kind of issues that have come, come up in the past and how, um, governments or central banks have solved these issues and I think critical thinking is really useful because it kind of creates a decisiveness when there is so much uncertainty in the markets and whatnot and um, I absolutely believe that economics provides transferable skills for future careers and uh, this anal analytical thinking and logical process is something that you'll 100% need um, in the future at, when you're working potentially in the financial sector. And being able to say that you've truly learned these skills is something that will be very desirable for the employer. Um, it is high paying eventually. And I think a lot of people in economics are motivated by money. So it will, it will be out there. Of course, you, you can't always start off high, but if you, if you really do put in the work, you can, end up getting six figures quite quickly if you go into investment banking for example but yeah that could be something that could really motivate you and there's plenty of career opportunities again you can just be absolutely anybody with economics you could even go into another degree and um, use these two honors to really elevate your career so I, I think economics is really useful that way and just the practical relevance again as in being able to understand what's going on with the world. If you're an investor yourself, you may um, be able to gauge which markets will do better in, in the future or the near future and be able to make a potential short gain in, in, the, um, in stocks and shares. So absolutely, I think there's practical relevance to it too. So uh, types of economics degrees. And so there is, the main ones I'm going to talk about are BA and BSc, so Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. Uh, these are, um, so Bachelor of Arts are designed to suit those who are interested in using the application of theory and the factors which influence key decisions policy making. So that's more to do with um, the logical thinking and analyt analytical process. But however, that's also completely there in BSc as well. There's, there's not really much of a difference between the two, if I'm being honest with you. But um, I'd say in a Bachelor of Arts, there's a lot more essay writing. There's a lot more evaluation, I'd say. Um, 
And if you're somebody who likes to just keep, just write, uh, this, this might be the one for you. And uh, a BSc is more of a technical approach with a greater mathematical and statistical focus. So you will, you will have a bit more complex maths here. Uh, there's a, something called econometrics, which uses the high level statistics to derive economic conclusions or create models, which, is, which can be really useful um, and could be good for your CV. Um, and the entry requirements are very similar for the both of them. However, BSc is slightly more geared towards a career in the finance industry. But if I'm being honest with you, a BA is absolutely good enough. And if you feel that you are more suited towards a BA, but you want to be in the finance industry, um, getting a first in the BA is miles better than getting a 2-1 in a BSc. And so, yeah, in general, economics is just a standard three-year course. And um, you can, uh, there are a number of options in the degree you uh, choose. So I just chose L100, the code for it, and that's just the standard three-year course, just economics. But you can um, get degrees where you have a year abroad or you have a placement year. And um, these two, usually the year abroad or placement year is in your third year or what would be my final year. And um, yeah, uh, just look on the websites for it if, you, if you're really interested in that. For the placement year, you'll have to make a number of applications and it might be a lot more difficult than the year abroad. But again, some unis have partnerships. So I know my university has, uh, my University of Nottingham has a partnership with PwC where um, certain degrees you can um, have students working with PwC. Um, I'm not sure if that's still around, but it was there back in the day for, um, for a placement year or some kind of placement in general. And you can also go for joint honors, uh, which just something like economics and French or economic, just economics and language, or it can be, there are many options. Um, I'd say this is quite difficult to, to balance. I almost went for economics and French, but then I thought I'd probably just want to have economics as just focus on economics, but uh, joint honors can be really useful because you're showing that you can multitask uh, to a very high standard and just show the motivation that you really like two subjects. And the other honor may be extremely useful. For example, if it's just mathematics, um, that can be really useful if you're applying for very um, math-based roles. And yeah, that's uh, a little... Um, talk on the types of economics degrees. So if you wanna find the right university for you, I was just thinking about um, some, of the, some of the points you, you'd want to consider. So location of the university is something that I believe is um, quite underrated and something that uh, really did matter to me, which is why I chose Nottingham in the first place. Uh, it depends on how really willing you are to leave home and not come back to it as much as possible. So, um, and whether it's in a, in a city with many opportunities, whether it's just campus based in a small area. So for example, the ones I can think of are the London universities. So LSC, UCL, Kings, you will have so many opportunities to just kind of live life in London but of course, there's the issues with cost and whatnot um, compared to like a Warwick where it's more sparse, I'd say, in the area at least. Um, but yeah, location is something you might want to look at because also um, it depends on how, uh, how much you want to go back home and how easy it is to go home. So I'd say to look out for that one. The career service can be really useful at the university. So um, at Nottingham, they provide a lot of help when it comes to careers in general. Um, there's always advisors available. If it's something that you've used at school a lot, then you may just want to uh, consider whether the uni has a good career service or not, just consulting people at that university about it. 
the teaching quality, this was a big deal for me. So University of Nottingham has a TEF -E uh, gold um, standard teaching. So it means that that's the best kind of possible teaching award. And um, not all top universities actually have this, um, which is which really shocked me. Um, but I'd say uh, having good teaching is essential because you want motivation to go to lectures. Um, don't get me wrong, going to lectures is very, very important. But having that extra motivation to engage with a lecturer really helps you learn the material. And, and then the social aspect, activity, opportunities of societies is kind of a given. You don't want to just be focusing on your lectures and internships because I, there's, there's just so much more out there. There's so many societies which you could be a part of, making new friends, really living university because these might be the last years of kind of freedom you have. So um, I'd say that's really important. And that's another reason why I chose the University of Nottingham. So um, let me talk about the UCAS application process now. Um, the application process to every university is very simple. Um, so you just have UCAS application form, which includes just your personal details and letter of reference, and then personal statement. And then that either leads to the offer or rejection for every uni except for Oxbridge, which is um, of course a lot more complicated. But this means that your personal statement is absolutely vital and you need to spend a lot of time on it. And I'd say it's very useful to start doing that as soon as possible. Um, you don't really lose out too much by um, applying later, but it's nice to get things out of the way and it could display to the university that you've shown that initiative to kind of apply earlier. And um, this was useful for when I um, applied actually. Um, I ended up applying a little later due to some external issues, but um, I found that a lot of students were actually getting let into university or being accepted um, quite early on around September, October-ish. And then there was an absolute stop gap uh, until about January. That was COVID times though, but um, it might be something you want to look at in general. Um, so in your personal statement, you only have 4,000 characters. So 4,000 characters can seem like a lot, but that's characters at the end of the day. That is not a lot of words. So you really do have to uh, be concise and demonstrate why you deserve a place at the university. Um, a few pointers that I wanted to mention about the personal statement is why have you chosen to study economics? Um, there can be a number of reasons. It can just be, I have a genuine interest in the subject. I've, um, I've followed it closely for, for a number of years. And if you can have a couple of points in there to really prove it and show sincerity, I think that's something that will be really useful, at least in the future, uh, at least in the application, sorry. And absolutely do not lie because not an, it's not the fact that um, you'll be interviewed about it, because obviously there's no interview unless you're going for Oxbridge. Um, but it can be something that ends up not being you and uh, you you can catch your own self in a, a web of lies and you could kind of say is the subject really for me they've accepted me based on something I've written which I haven't actually done and that can kind of create this own like personal bubble where um, there's a lot of doubt about um, the subject which I just don't think is needed at all um, so yeah, show a genuine interest in economics outside of academics. This is an absolutely key one, because one thing I'd say is that university uh, economics is a very, very different to um, economics at school. Completely different in terms of the essay writing, in terms of what's covered. It's a lot more in in-depth 
at uni and a lot more niche I'd say in some in some aspects you do so there are certain topics at school which are covered in like a couple of lessons which you spend a semester learning at uni so I'd say that's um, something that's really needed so you want to you want to say in a personal statement who's your famous economist and why and which areas of economics interest you the most um, I I talked about developmental economics and I thought that was just really useful in general um, to speak about because that's, I wrote um, inequality, poverty and inequality is one of the reasons that I did choose to study economics. Um, enter essay competitions. So there's always a number of essay competitions online. You can just search it up. Maybe the school, your school um, covers these essay competitions as well. I'd say put a foot in there, just make an effort. If you're successful, that will really pay off. That that will really impress the university. Um, and yeah, uh, these big firms, uh, Goldman Sachs, PwC, Ernst Young, uh, offer these virtual insight weeks. Look to see if you can maybe get into one of those or just try and find any kind of experience. Uh, there are these like online virtual internships which last about like, you can just do them in six hours and you can add it to your LinkedIn. That, that might be really useful um, just to be like, just to show that I kind of um, show that initiative to apply to, yeah, apply my knowledge of economics or to learn more about um, future jobs before even starting university. That'd be really impressive. And write about a, a recent book you've read and not just free economics um, and make sure you evaluate it as well. So everybody talks about um, free economics, which is a, a book about economics. It's kind of a, a starting book aimed to wow you with facts. Um, but I think that people who read the personal statement are getting pretty sick of it. You might want to make yourself stand out um, by including uh, another book, maybe a book which is uh, specializing about in the, um, in a certain subject, if it's behavioral economics or, or it's just something like that. And make sure you evaluate it. Make sure you come up with like a key takeaway and a criticism maybe, or just an opinion of yours, which seems original. And another thing, don't just mention your achievements and experiences. Make sure you expand on them and write about what you've learned from them because there's then there's one thing to just have the experience to have the um to show that you've completed something but the there must be a reason why you did it in the first place and um the uni wants to know like what is it that you've actually learned from it what how willing to learn are you how um easy is it for you to take away key points from something so for example, Duke of Edinburgh can be resilience and so forth. Um, and make sure you use good English in your personal statement. Be prepared to write many drafts, uh, ask as many people as possible to read it. Do not feel down if they criticize it heavily, they're just putting their opinion out there and it might be the best. It's always good to have diverse opinions. So, um, I'm going to mainly talk about Russell Group Universities in, in this slide. Um, but in economics, you should expect the typical requirements to be in the range of A star, A star, A to A, B, B. So A star, A star, A being the top, that's Cambridge, and then A, B, B uh, around Cardiff. So um, if you do four A levels, the, a, the last A or the B would um, also, uh, so there would also be um, A star, A star, A, B exam, for example, for Cambridge and so on. And um, that's just if you're doing 4A levels, which um, you might want to do, but I think three is good enough for um, economics. Obviously, um, if you want to do further mathematics and maths, that might be, that might be useful to do because Really, once you do further maths, maths becomes quite easy for you. Um, but yeah, uh, IB, uh, if you're doing an international baccalaureate, uh, you'd want uh, to be in the range of 32 to 40. 
And uh, in GCSEs, um, you just want to at least, at least have a six in maths. Um, if you want to really get to the top years, of course, you'd want maybe an eight or a nine. But if it's Russell Group, it's, it's still pretty good. Um, yeah, um, it's actually expected that you take maths at A level, which is which makes complete sense. Um, however, some unis have still accepted people without a maths A level. Um, for example, at my uni in my course, despite the fact that it said they said that maths was required, um, there were still people in my uh, class who who didn't take maths as an A level, and they were given classes at university to cover anything that they missed at A level. You do not need to do economics because um, unis have made an agreement to do with um, improving equality and just inclusivity in that not all colleges offer um, economics as an A-level and it would be extremely unfair to um, judge somebody based on their ability to learn the subject if it's just not available in their area. So, but maths is available everywhere, which is why they'd want to want you to do maths and then some universities oxbridge lsc will um expect you to take further maths um further maths can be quite daunting but if you stick through it to the end it it can be okay but that's just something you'd want you'd expect to do uh, later on just maybe think about that um, in terms of Oxbridge entries, so I actually didn't apply to Cambridge or Oxford for economics. Um, I didn't really see myself working well there. Uh, they just didn't seem like the right unis for me. And I thought it would be a bit too difficult for my for my liking. But um, this is the process to um, Oxbridge entries. So they only offer BA, um, so Bachelor of Arts um which potentially could kind of mold you into one of those policy makers but you can also just go into anything again um ba and bsc are not that different at the end of the day they still offer pretty much the same modules um but for cambridge and oxford uh you have a thinking skills assessment which is mainly to do with uh, maths based subjects i'm pretty sure so it's there quite a bit divided into two parts, a 90 minute multiple choice thinking skills assessment, and then a 30 minute writing task. Um, so you register for it in September, uh, from what I know, and you take the actual exam in November. I think this is really useful because hopefully you should be done by, uh, hopefully your UCAS application should be done by then, and you're just kind of focusing on A-levels. Um, if you get these kind of things out of the way, um, it means that, life becomes a lot easier for learning your subject later on. And um, another thing, so thinking skills assessment is required for both Cambridge and Oxford. I think it's the same test as well, or must be. Um, but for Cambridge, you also, if you're invited to the interview, you have to submit a written piece of work. Um, I'm not sure what exactly they'll ask for, but they will specify at the time uh, once they request it. I think it's just genuinely like uh, an essay you've handed into your teacher or something along those lines. And um, they'll question this in the interview. They'll use this for questioning and um, make sure you understand what you've written and make sure it's a good piece, I guess. I mean, that's a given. But yeah, of course, then comes the Cambridge and Oxford interview. Um, Thought provoking questions about economics is something, yeah, they they really do want to grind your gears in that interview. They will grill you. Um, so they'll ask these vague questions like, are there too many people in this world? Or like, what's the difference between uh, management and leadership? Along those lines, it's these very fine lines. Um, and you can uh, prepare for it. There will be um, questions online. There will be books you can get. Um, but yeah, I'd say the interview uh, will be the hardest bit. So um, make sure you're prepared for that, if anything, and mentally, because um, it, it will be very tough. But um, I'd say Oxbridge is all right um, for applying because for the other um, universities you apply for, um, the, the process is more streamlined than 
once you've applied, you're just done. So it's good, it's good stuff. Um, so dealing with application stress. So you're, so you're at university for three or more years. So it can be four, it can even be five if you take a gap year. And you really want to make sure that the university you're at is something you enjoy. If it's something you're pushing yourself to get into, but you don't really, you see yourself just scraping through, that might not, you might want to evaluate uh, what you, what you're doing, because um, sometimes it's just not worth the stress and you are going to have to multitask a lot at uni. And if you're having to catch up on lectures or just deal with the harder material, um, finding internships and progressing with your career can be a difficult thing to occur. And I just wanted to say, if you're unsuccessful in getting to a top university, that is absolutely fine. There are so many people out there and there are very limited spots, especially COVID backlog has, has happened now. Um, you've seen it with other um, degrees, medicine, it's so difficult now and um, yeah, really it's, it's not on you if you don't get into the top university. So I actually applied for LSE as my top university and um, I didn't get in at the time and I didn't really blame myself for it and I'm pretty happy at Nottingham, I'm pretty happy that this opportunity at Nottingham has come up. And I'd say your primary focus should be to learn as much as possible from university. Every university is a university you can learn from because they have the right teaching in place. They have the right structure in place. They are a great institution after all. And they will give you so many learning opportunities, be it academic or social. And these are formative years as well. Make sure what you, wherever you apply to will not make you miserable. Again, like these are the last few years of potential freedom you may have. And if you're miserable with them, then what was the point really? Because you're still going to get a good job no matter which university you go to. And if you surpass the minimum requirements, then you are definitely good enough to get into these universities. So it's not on you even if you do not get in. So do not give up uh, or do give up hope at least. Um, yeah, I'd say be um, ambitious, but make sure you take into account the stress and your mental health at the end of the day, because that matters a lot more than a flashy, a shiny college or university. So um, I'm gonna talk a bit about um, actual university and what it feels like, because I feel that this is something that I didn't really take into account when I applied. And I was just kind of hit with this confusion when people were talking about internships and, um, these kind of professional jobs. And um, economics at university gives you an amazing people to meet people, um, to meet others and build strong connections for the future. So um, you get so many people who come from different countries or even different areas who have different interests. And I think it really helps you uh, learn or just figure out more about yourself. What do you really want? out of this degree. And societies will help with this. There will be an economics uh, society, economics and finance. There's one in Nottingham. They are massive here and um, they really do help in a streamlined process to employment. They always have employers visiting. Uh, so the, the actual society itself in Nottingham has many uh, connections with employers and employers will visit your university as well. There'll be interactive sessions do look out for them. They can help build your skills for interviews and talks from professionals also help in this sense. Kind of making sure that you have the right mentality to succeed or finding out like which sector is the one for you. So I'm just gonna talk about a bit about work experience and internships because this has absolutely just shaped my whole university experience and it might be the same for you in the future, um, yeah. So um, as, your, as a first year in university, uh, you have the opportunity to apply to Spring Week Insight programs at these great, great financial institutions, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, even BlackRock. 
And um, yeah, these will be a few days or a week or so where you really get into um, learning about the logistics, the operations of these spring weeks, uh, these um, institutions. So I actually didn't go for a spring week in first year. I thought it was a bit too much stress. So I applied to the uh, Nottinghamshire County Council through my uni and I managed to get in, which was very useful. I learned a lot from looking at the projects, evaluating whether they um, followed the plan set or the plan and ambition set by the council earlier. It was very useful and I used the skills I learned from this a lot at interviews. Um, so you, you can also do a summer internship in your penultimate year of university. So I'm in my second year, my penultimate year now, and I have been applying, or I was applying for summer internships from September until about quite recently. And it's somewhat like a spring week, but just extended. Um, it will last around six to 10 weeks and you really gain a good insight on your future career maybe. And the application work process is so long and so grueling, but you have to keep trying throughout the year to secure a placement. It's, it's one of those things where um, it can easily break your morale when you get rejected, but you also can't take it personally because they don't actually know who you are. So that's all I can say about that. So I've just got some potential roles uh, to look at. Um, just kind of giving you a gauge of what you can be in the future. These are more financial sector based, but there are plenty more out there. Um, so investment banking analysts, this is like top, top. So very high stakes and use communication, analytical skills. You deal with mergers and acquisitions, et cetera. Um, very big. Actuarial analysts uh, use complex maths to calculate key information. Life, for example, if you're working at a life expectancy or life insurance firm, can calculate life expectancy, audit and assurance, uh, your Deloitte's and your EYs, uh, identifying key risks for clients and designing strategies to mitigate them. And you can even go into, so similar to actuarial analysts, quantitative analysts um, in the financial sector, you apply maths and statistical methods to uh, financial and risk management problems. And I just wanted to put one out there that's not financial sector because I was a research intern at both the county council and um, inclusive boards where I conducted research to gather this important information, presenting it to your project manager or to evaluate and to kind of alter any strategy, devise a new strategy. Um, it's really helpful and there's many more opportunities out there. Um, so this is kind of just the application process um, I wanted to talk about. So you have um, an initial application, which is just you putting down your personal details, quite a lot about um, the grades you got at school, the grades uh, you're predicted at uni and so forth. So for example, I um, got a first in my first year. So I, uh, I wrote first there and and predict to have one for the rest of my degree. So you can just put first predicted and so on. And um, sometimes you ask the question, why, why do you want to join this firm or so on? Um, so that's your initial application. And you have an online assessment where um, you have a number of tasks to do, which really do tax your brain, require your analytical and logical thinking and it's very uh, fast paced as well. It's under very high time pressure. And then afterwards you get to do, if you pass that, you get to do a video interview. So this is usually just pre-recorded questions and you record yourself on a screen. They sometimes can actually be real people uh, on the other side, but I didn't come across that this year. And then finally is the assessment center where you just spend a whole day being grilled. Um, you are interviewed throughout the day. You have to complete job simulation tasks. You do role plays. They really see who you are as a person, whether you are the person for the job. And then you receive your offer. And expect to be rejected a lot at these um, applications. Uh, yeah, uh, 
at these firms, usually a lot of rejections happen after the online assessment or after the video interview. So you've spent time in it only to achieve nothing, but you do actually learn quite a bit from doing the process again and again and again, and you can become more um, efficient in the whole process. Um, so my advice for these internship applications uh, is that if you do not manage to secure an internship, it is absolutely not the end of the world. You, I want to say the main focus of university is to engage with the lecturers, get the best grade you can. If you want to do postgrad, that's the main thing you can have. And you can always get any kind of experience. It doesn't have to be these internships. It can just be, for example, a, a job as a waiter or something like that, something that my careers advisors told me, something which provides transferable skills to show that you can work in the workplace is pretty good. Um, and you can gain experience at university through placement programs, exactly what I did. So for the Nottinghamshire County Council and inclusive boards, um, I used the Nottingham uh, My Career um, kind of application scheme and it really helped me gain um, a lot of experience, which I use a lot in my interviews. And I want to say a 2-1 a or a first still matters a lot. Please make this your top priority. Do not uh, lose your focus by spending way too much time on these applications. Um, feeling out of touch with lectures is one of the worst feelings. And you, um, you really do want to make sure that that's still your top priority. However, try to keep going because you will eventually get there. I know people who, um, for example, have been going for summer internships in the past and they got, a, they got an offer or a placement in June, just before they're about to begin, which is absolutely crazy to me. Um, and the same thing for spring weeks. I had people uh, applying in March, uh, getting a spring week a few weeks later. So just keep going for it. But if it becomes too much for you, then it's not worth it. It's not worth the burnout. Um, I've seen it in many people. Your mental health is absolutely number one at university. Make sure you get your degree and then see where you can go from there. Economics is a brilliant degree. Uh, one more thing, please talk to careers advisors. It will really help clear your mind. And um, it just, for some reason, them coming to you with a solution just clears up absolutely everything, even though they may have not said enough or like said much. Um, it's just having that professional out there who's seen this before telling you and reassuring you that you're along the right path is something that's really useful. But yeah, that's my kind of in university life thing about um, economics, especially. I just wanted to really highlight this because this is this becomes a big part of your degree and um, it's really useful for employability in the future. And it can be something that you kind of consider at an earlier stage, you can mentally prepare yourself for it. But yeah, um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, that's me giving, me, giving you a, a little summary on uh, the experience of that, applying for economics and university. Um, does anybody want to ask questions which are recorded or I can um, just uh, end the recording now? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll end the recording. Oh, um, sorry, I'm just gonna stop sharing for a second. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, iPhone. Uh, hi, Taya. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for this lovely information. I'm a parent. Um, I just wanted to ask about uh, work experience you mentioned at uh, A-levels. Could you just highlight about work experience, so relevant work experience, and how important it is in your, maybe it's in your personal statement or during the interview, please? Yeah, um, absolutely. So. I'd say that any kind of work experience is, is useful um, if it's before university. Uh, I think they just want to know that you've shown that you can multitask in a hard time. 
um, there will be there will be like these insight weeks or um, just any kind of um, online insight um, process with, um, for example, JP Morgan, which you can do um, to really show that you want to be in the financial sector. But I'd say just finding anything, for example, even um, shadowing people in, in hospitals or even something like that, or just your regular um, working in harsh conditions or fast conditions in like a Tesco or Sainsbury's can be extremely useful. Um, I'd say having relevant to this uh, sector work experience isn't really necessarily the, um, the be all or end all for university applications. So um, yeah, that's, that's what I have to say about it. Um, just try and get something across the board. But again, you don't have to. Um, I'd say application for university is more based on how willing and how curious are you um, about economics. I can stop the recording actually. Thank you.